Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. This is Boss Vision where I share with you all everything you need to know about making candles. I make videos about making candles and how to earn money making candles. If you're interested in that sort of content, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. I also have an interactive workbook that will give you actionable steps with specific links to receive business funding and take your candle sales to the next level. I sell my own products on my website, sensavision.com. You can use code YouTube for 20% off. In today's video, I'm gonna give you the crash course in how to be successful at your first vendor show. I will be giving you step-by-step -step what to do and what not to do so you are set up for success. And I will be giving you an honest depiction of my first experience this year at my first farmer's market so you will be aware of what went right and what went wrong. So if you like videos like this and you wanna see more helpful candle making tips, then definitely subscribe so you don't miss out anything else that I post. Give this video a thumbs up it definitely helps the YouTube algorithm get us to more candle makers. And yeah, let's just jump right into it. Number one, I would highly, highly, highly encourage you, once you compile all of your materials and you're ready to go, pack your car the night before. My vendor show this year was from 8 a.m. to noon. Easy. All I had to do was pack my car the day before. And what did I do? Wait until the day of. Horrible, horrible, horrible. So I actually woke up at 5 a.m. I was set up. I was on time early. I had been moving and grooving. Hair done, showered, had printed out my price list. Yeah, I printed that last minute too. Had everything done. Everything was in my car except my table runner. Oh my God. So it's super important when you're doing a vendor show to have a table runner to set up an aesthetic that is professional for your potential customers. And what I failed to do was to locate that. So I do live in a three story town home, right? And I have recently organized my garage, recently organized my closets. And you know when you organize stuff, that's typically when you lose stuff, to be honest. So I'm like distraught. I still do not know where my table runner is. That table runner could be anywhere. And I scoured my house. Like I had to be at the event by 7 to get ready by 7.45. Everything was in my car at 6.40. I was going to get there at 6.50. I was going to be early. And it took me 30 minutes of just going through my house. I got... So frustrated around 7.10 and I ended up actually just grabbing some curtain from my garage and using that as my table runner. I pretended like it didn't even happen. I acted like it wasn't even an issue for me. But I'd love to give you some specific advice. If you see something within your business that you aren't that confident about in front of a customer, do not amplify that insecurity. Never amplify insecurities. Create jokes if they bring it up. But otherwise, don't bring it up. Bring up what you win at. So I was just selling them candles. I was going in about the value of each candle, which I'll get into later on in this video. But yes, guys, definitely my number one tip is to pack your car the night before. Okay, number two, you need to make sure you speak to every person you see. Okay, so I got this tip from Princess Hey Girl Hey, shout out to Princess. When I did my first market in 2020, I flew myself to Houston, Texas. I shipped all of my candles from Durham, North Carolina to Houston, Texas, and they all got there unbroken. It was just, your girl was killing it. I was killing it, right? But the main thing I messed up on was sitting behind my table mad. Like I, this is my first experience in person selling candles. So what can happen to your ego is that it gets a little bit tainted when people look and walk away. You kind of feel defeated. You, your mind takes you down the wrong path, but you have to take your mind down the right path and understand the fact that you are selling them a product they never saw a commercial about this. They never saw you on YouTube. They never saw you on TV, on BET, MTV. You are not on VH1, okay? You gotta show them your value. They don't know you from a can of paint. Stranger danger, danger stranger. They are looking at you and running away from you. Get up. Don't just be sitting behind your table, hiding behind your computer, hiding behind your phone. Get up. Super important. Princess taught me that, so this year I got up. I was beside the table. I'll say, like, hi, how are you to every person? Even people who didn't look like they wanted any candles. What that does is shows the people who do want candles that you're confident, that you're eager to talk to them, you're friendly. So they know when you walk by my table, you about to get a show. And the number one thing I would say to say, because as I was getting in my groove of it, I figured out what was resonating with people making them stop, is to say, hi, would you like to smell some candles? I didn't say bye, okay? <laughs> I said, hi, would you like to smell some candles? This got so many more people to stop 
at my table and once they actually stopped I was able to just word vomit you know all of the premium qualities of my candle <sighs> your girl sells a premium luxury 12 ounce jar from Maxi. these are porcelain high quality vessels with a high quality lid with these cotton wicks that are environmentally friendly and toxin free phthalate free fragrance oil as well as luxurious vegan coconut apricot cream wax okay period so this is the talk track I'm going going off of boom 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 while they are smelling some candles okay it's people who were there just to buy some peaches or they just want to buy some lemonade or whatever you buy in a market and I am selling these candles okay because it's super important to keep them engaged within that conversation so I definitely recommend greeting every single person you see number three after you've greeted them don't just say hi would you like to sell smell some candles and then just overwhelm them with product information if you notice something about their outfit compliment their outfit if you have a common interest make small talk you need to build rapport okay rapport building is the key to success when selling to someone you don't know you need to let their guard down allow them to tell you more allow them to word vomit important to you more so that's definitely something i found success with when I, when I was trying to sell in person because people need to hear that you actually hear them because everyone's self-absorbed everyone's into themselves so never feel too afraid to speak to anyone because honestly they are not judging you the way you think they are you gotta speak up okay so that's what it is super important to make sure that you are not only just saying how great your candle is but making sure they feel heard and honestly a great example of that which was in my live because I went live during my farmers market you can go back and watch that video in that live I heard this woman she was smelling my candles and she noticed that the scent had more than just one scent in it. So some of the scents had not only lavender, but it had gardenia tuberose and it had vanilla in it. So I was telling her that the candle was a lavender love story. Lavender love letter, that's the name of the candle. And everyone was obsessed with this scent because it had more gardenia tuberose, lavender, and vanilla in it. And people were just like, oh my god, I normally hate lavender, but I love your lavender candle. And she was just... Um, telling me about the scent notes and what I could tell is that she had a previous understanding of how you blend fragrances so from there I just continued to talk to her more about my process of blending fragrances instead of just talking about products so that we built that connection and she purchased so it was so gratifying to see that when you build that connection with someone make them laugh or you teach them something they may not know they will purchase from you I mean typically on social media when you're selling a product online you got to make sure your content is either educational or entertaining or impactful and you know tugs at their heartstrings back when i was selling crystal candles i was tugging at spirituality within my candles so i would definitely not recommend doing crystals okay but definitely tug at someone's heartstrings or be educational or informational okay number four have a bundle have a bundle incentive going okay because what I found my first sale was that this girl was looking at my candles and she wanted to buy a big one and a small one she was like okay how much would that be she was trying to calculate in her head I was like I have a bundle for $45 if you buy the large one and the little one she said, okay perfect and she bought it it was perfect it was perfect because of the bundle that created the sale she wasn't going to purchase them separately because it's two separate costs they look at the numbers like oh that costs a lot but the bundle makes it feel like they're getting a deal they feel like they're getting an incentive that you're not just taking them for the paper okay period even though these are high quality candles don't back down that's the other thing with the bundle don't back down like if someone is telling you oh wow that's expensive continue to dig into what expense it is to them. Like well, expensive, when you say expensive, does it mean it costs too much? Are you thinking that the quality of this candle is not often priced at that point? Say something like that, you know, make them talk more about it. And then from there, take your time with getting back to that objection and talk more about the value of the product because it's too often in negotiation you run into the scenario that someone is looking at you and they know it's worth it but they just don't want to spend the money so if you can actually walk them through their thought process they'll tell you the truth and at a market turn off your happy ears I heard this from a sales director a while ago he was like turn off your happy ears okay if you are selling to someone they're just hype they're smiling at you always be vigilant listening and aware of when they are just saying things to get you to have a certain reaction if it's not an organic exchange you're not getting any currency from that if they're just like yeah 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 and lying 
you're not buying, okay? You gotta make sure they're telling you the truth because then they're gonna give you real money. Real money with real words, okay, period. So always listen. I know this is one woman, she was just like, oh, I really would buy, I would buy the lavender if you had it in a small size. And I was like, is it a price issue or is it a size issue? She's like, oh yeah, it's kind of, the price is too high. I was like, so you would buy the larger one if it was at a better price. And, and then we discussed the bundles and we went back to the value of the candle and I was just giving her more details about the candle. And then I was just telling her more about my process and what I do to create the candles. And we were just randomly going off on a tangent and she interrupted me and made the purchase. So that's very important. It's very important to make sure that you get them to circle back to what their true desires are so you can determine whether or not they even will benefit from the candle. Last thing you wanna do is make somebody buy something and they regret it. If you are in a conversation with someone and they're telling you a lie, you wanna unpack and dig out the truth of that to see if they actually don't want the candle or if they actually just wanted to push back because that's your natural reaction to being sold something. My last tip, and then I'll go into everything that I think I did wrong. <laughs> my last tip would be to not take no for an answer. So we just went into more about the negotiation tactics. Um, that's for someone if they're saying that they want a certain size or if they're saying, oh, I really wish that you had this set or, oh, I really love that set, but I just don't know about it. I don't know if I'm ready yet. But if someone's giving you a hard no, not interested, don't really take it personal. Don't feel like that is it that is not the end of the world like i have personally said no at something and eventually said yes because the initial shock of someone asking you to take some of your hard-earned money and give it to them is like hard no i don't want to pay you i'm not paying you but if you could take away that resistance through continuing the conversation after the hard no, you could turn it into a yes. So that's really something I focus on within the market of just giving people the more insight into the value of each product and making people laugh. Honestly, if you can make people laugh, you can sell anything to them. I told y'all earlier about the educational entertaining or you know emotional entertainment. You need to be entertaining, okay? Your talk track has to be on point. Hit, 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 okay? Period. Ask people what they're doing that day. Typically, markets are on a Saturday. Like, what else are you doing today? What did you do before you got here? What's your plans for tomorrow? You know, small talk. This one girl, she's like, oh, well, my friends are in town. She's like, who can I get this candle for? I was like, I know, it's always a co competition. So when she was pushing back about the price, I was like, remember, you're getting this for your friends so when you get your friends a good gift they get you a good gift and that sold it <laughs> so I would definitely recommend working on your power of negotiation you can practice this with family members have them just shoot out random things that excuses as to why they wouldn't purchase something family members always got something to say they're your number one hater so they're the perfect people to practice on okay <laughs> but yeah that was all of my tips for success and now i just want to give you my honest perspective of how i think i did as well as share with you how much money i made so to be transparent with you as i mentioned i messed up when not packing my car early on and i lost my table runner i don't know where that thing is i'm still looking around my camp studio hoping and dreaming and praying it shows up in here but i don't think it will but i wish it would because it was so cute i spent like 200 dollars on it i might have to reach out to one of those companies and get me a free one to promote it on my channel but beyond that i also messed up because i left my business cards at home okay i will put a list of everything you need to bring a checklist of what to bring to a farmer's market i'll link that down below so you get that you can get that checklist okay completely free so you'll be set up for success um but business cards are imperative because you know those time wasters that you get that eventually turn into sales long term they'll be like uh do you have your business card and i didn't have it i have one business card event planner event guy he took it because he wants me to, to create a wholesale he's a wall he makes vegan ice cream so he wanted me to create a, a waffle scented candle which I have the sense for that. I think it would be really good, a good partnership to do that with him. Um, just because he runs like a larger store. So I think it's a really good idea to have that in his store, the scent. Um, but I would say a room spray for that. I think a room spray would be beneficial. But I had no other business cards. People asked for business cards and instead 
if you mess up like I did, um, just hold this tidbit in your brain when you get to the market. I'm like, oh, I did watch that video about markets and when you leave your business cards, this is what you do. Always say, oh, I don't have my business. I ran out of business cards today. It's been a busy morning, um, but I do have my Instagram. Do you have social media? This is my Instagram at handle. If you follow me there and, and you DM me there, you will get a, a percentage off your order when you're ready to purchase. This actually helps you build up your social media following, which will get you other strangers on your page because the larger your following is when you're posting Instagram reels, people are looking at your following. Like, oh wow, she has like, she has a thousand followers. This might be a reputable business. Let me purchase, you know, that's how that goes. And then in terms of leaving your business card and people don't have Instagram, they have Facebook. So they'll follow you on Facebook. You definitely need Facebook people. The more followers on your Facebook, the better your Facebook looks as well to the algorithm. So definitely encourage you to leverage that. And then another great tip that shout out to Princess, she gave me this tip two, three years ago, four, four now. Wow, grandma, I'm a grandma. She said to offer a giveaway. So when people are at your table, offer an incentive for them to make a purchase. So basically, after they made a purchase, or if they haven't, say follow me on Instagram. I'm doing a giveaway towards the end of this market. I will give someone a brand new, a free candle. So if you follow me on Instagram, I will just look at everyone who followed me today and decide who the winner is and DM you and I'll give you the candle for free. And, and you just let me know which one you want. But that's just something you say way at the end of the conversation because if you lead a conversation with free, that's how they want you to end it. They're like, okay, well, I'm definitely not buying anything because I hope I win that giveaway. And they might even visit you multiple times and make sure that their name is in the ballot for the giveaway. So yeah, just try to end with a giveaway. Don't lead with giveaway. <laughs> but yeah, that's definitely something I would have done better. And um, in terms of my specific experience, I was getting a little cynical towards the end to be transparent. It was like the event ended at 12. It was around 1158 and this woman walked up to my table. She was like, okay, well I need to make my rounds. And I was like, well the event is over in two minutes. Like <laughs> I said that to her, that was a little snappy. So I recommend don't get snappy. Never, ever, ever get snappy with uh, <laughs> a customer. I said, well the event ends in two minutes. I don't know if that was really snappy or more so like, sassy or trying to be salesy but whatever just make sure you are as nice as possible but as confident as possible confidence is key to getting sales within this game you have to act like you know what you're talking about the thing that really helped was i didn't bring up that tablecloth i hated it it was like okay it was red on both sides it was beige in the middle it was a hot mess tablecloth oh i was mortified but then i realized if you keep bringing attention to it that's all people are going to notice. But if you bring attention to the good things, that's all people are going to notice. I didn't say any of that. Oh, and my tent. You need to make sure your tent, if you're outside, you make sure your tent is like iron. My tent was wrinkly. It did not look very nice. And then also I had these five pound weights from Academy Sports. You need to have 10 pound weights minimum for each because I think that makes it more sturdy. It didn't fall, but it was very scary. I was very scared. <laughs> It didn't fall, but it was alarming. It was like, oh, oh please, Jesus, please don't let us teeter totter over. Oh, okay, period. And you make sure you do not, um, you make sure you lock your table too. There's this yellow lock. Make sure you lock your table or else you have a nasty fall like I did back in 2022 with my crystal candles, which I think was God. He was like, you need to stop selling crystal candles. So they all failed. It was like 36 and they all failed because my table was not locked. <laughs> yeah. And that was all of my tips. That's my honest opinion about the markets. Um, I did do a video on everything you should bring to a market, but if you don't want to go back to that video, I'll link everything I brought to my market in this video so you'll know what to bring and you'll be set up for success. And I hope this video was helpful. Comment down below if you've done markets, what's your number one tip or what's your number one mess up that you had. I'd love to chat with y'all about those and then if this video was helpful please make sure you subscribe 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 okay and i will see y'all in the next video okay bye